Hello, in this video we will see how to generate association rules to find correlations within your dataset elements by leveraging Oracle Database's association mining algorithm. The association mining function delivers two outputs. One, frequently occurring items within a dataset called frequent item sets and two, the relationship between these co-occurring items called association rules. For information on how to generate frequent item sets within Oracle Analytics, there is a separate video on this topic that you can refer to. In this video, we will see how to generate the second output which is the association rules. Here is a sales transaction data set with order line IDs, customer IDs, items or products that each customer purchased. Let's use this data set and see if there is any correlation between the products that the customer purchased. So we start by creating a data flow here. We choose our sales transaction as the input data set. Since our data set is sitting in an Oracle database, I can add the database analytics node here to invoke algorithms from the database. I pick frequent item set operation. Let me hide data, collapse the output and look at the parameters. Transaction ID in our case is customer ID. In the item value column I select item as we want to identify association rules between items purchased. Item set let me set it to a max of 4. I will leave these two as default. Now we have an option here that allows us to generate association rules for this data set. So let me set that to yes. Default is top 10 association rules. Let me change this to 100 and I will leave the output section as is. Now let me add a save data step. I'll give it a data set name, a table name. Let me fix the treat as of the some of these columns here. So let me save this data flow and execute it. Now behind the scenes, BI Server is invoking the association mining algorithm in the database and generating two outputs. One, frequent item sets with two to four items in each item set and two association rules. Once the data flow completes, I can see two outputs generated. This one contains the frequent item sets and the second one is the one with the association rules. So let me open this one. Let me bring in all these columns into a table and look at the data. The first is a rule ID which is a unique ID for every rule here. Next we see antecedent and consequent. Now every rule has antecedents and a consequent. Now what do these mean? Association rules are similar to if-then statements. So there are two parts in an association rule, an if part and a then part. Antecedent pertains to the if part and consequent pertains to the then part. Let's try to understand this with a simple example. Here is an item set of three items, bread, egg and milk. If bread and egg are purchased, then milk is purchased as well. So bread and egg are antecedents and milk is consequent. This is an item set of three items where we have two antecedents and one consequent. In case of item sets with two items, we will have one antecedent and one consequent. And in the case of item sets with four items, we will have three antecedents and one consequent. Now let's say I want to see all those combinations which result in the purchase of an item, say Avery. So I want to see all those rules where consequent is Avery. So I filter on consequent and I pick every. So these are the combinations where every is purchased when these items are purchased. If I sort this increasing, I see baskets of two items where when these products are bought, every is bought as well. Similarly, for baskets of three items, when these two products are bought, every is bought as well and so on. Next one is support percentage. This indicates how frequently an item set appears within the data set. Mathematically, support is the fraction of the total number of transactions in which the item set occurs. Value of support helps us identify the rules worth considering for further analysis. If an item set happens to have a very low support, we do not have inf enough information on the relationship between its items and hence no conclusion can be drawn from such a rule. Next is confidence. Confidence indicates the number of times the if-then statements are found true. 
This measure defines the likeliness of occurrence of consequence in the basket given that the basket already has the antecedents. Mathematically, confidence is the ratio of the number of transactions that include all items in the consequent as well as the antecedent to the number of transactions that include all items in the antecedent. Okay, so this is an important measure that could help me in identifying the relevant association rules in my data set. But one drawback of the confidence measure is that it might misrepresent the importance of an association. Because this calculation only accounts for how popular your antecedents are, it does not account for how popular your consequents are. If consequence or every in this case is also very popular in general, there will be a higher chance that a transaction containing antecedents will also contain every, thus inflating the confidence measure. To account for the base popularity of both constituent items, we use a third measure called lift. Lift is nothing but the ratio of confidence to expected confidence or how many times an if-then statement is expected to be found true. Lift can have positive or negative values. If the lift value is negative, then there is negative correlation between your items. If lift is positive, there is positive correlation. And if the ratio equals 1, then there is no correlation. More the value of lift, greater are the chances of preference to buy the consequent if the customer has already bought the antecedent. I can sort by lift descending. So these are the combinations that I am interested in. Now in my data set, confidence and lift show similar pattern, but this may not always be the case. So the lift value will help me in identifying the interesting combinations in my data set. Next, antecedent percentage. This is similar to support percentage, but here they show how frequently just the antecedents appear in the data set. Mathematically, it's the fraction of the total number of transactions in which the combination of antecedents occur. Consequent percentage is similar. It shows how frequently the consequent occurs in the data set. Since we have filtered for one consequent every, this percentage is the same across all the rows. Thanks for watching this video.